Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show. You may notice that I'm drinking from this, which is available at dftba.com. <laughs> SciShow Talk Show. It's the SciShow where we talk, and today joining us we have Louis Winkler, who Huzzah! helps out with graphics and animation at SciShow. Thank you for doing that, and also thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. What are we going to do today? Well, today uh, I'm really into cyborgs and the use of technology and the human body. So I started looking into uh, new LED contacts. It's uh, utilized instead of glasses, like Google glasses, mm -hmm. that are projecting images into the eye. It's a small little piece of plastic that you just put. sits on there. sits on your eye. I really like it because it's not only helping the blind, but you can also play video games while you're walking down the street. That seems dangerous to me. Uh, it could be natural selection, maybe. Mm. Yes, for those of us who are quickly adopting the new technology. Exactly. So are you uh, afraid of death? Uh, hmm. That's a very good question. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very weird question. No, but I'm, I'm trying to intellectualize this. Am I afraid of the personification of death or dying? No, I... With, like death with the scythe. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't thinking about him. Okay. I was thinking about the institution of no longer being alive. I feel like that's where what this all boils down to. Sometimes when we start talking about like the interface between man and machine, and how long is it going to be before we are not all human, ah. and we're a little bit of both. And oh. if if that transition occurs fully, then when is it that we no longer like we can just get repairs instead of um, dying? I guess we already get repairs to an extent. Yeah, so we're going down the, the path of Kurtzwellian sort of... Yes, okay. we are. But that is ob obviously not where we're going to end up. We are also going to talk about the contact lenses because I'm curious about them. But I just wanted to introduce this because I'm curious about um, that, the, yes, Kurtzwellian. I had never heard that term. I talk to him all the time, so he loves it when I call him Kurtzwellian. I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> No, Ray Kurzweil, uh, yeah. uh, if you don't know who he is, a uh, fascinating character. Yes, the singularity is near, but not near enough. He's <laughs> trying to live forever. That's his goal. Uh, ultimate goal, yeah. yeah. I would not mind uh, having the option of not dying when it comes right down to it, but living forever seems like a scary goal. It's, it's a bit Dr. Manhattan. I would think you would lose your humanity yeah. f after so long. It's a bit Dr. But Manhattan. I like you, Louie. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> Ray Kurzweil, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan. We're having a good, we're having a good name drop session here. It's yeah, good. we'll just keep keep rolling with it. Yeah. So back to the contacts. Um, what can you see through them? Uh, right now, not much. Uh, it's it's a very small um, matrix. That technology is quickly increasing. So um, again, getting back to the disabled and the blind. Mm -hmm they're able to see light. So that's a huge step for right. someone who's completely blind. Um, I could imagine in the next two years, uh, it would be pretty widely available. Just considering that you can actually put it in your eye and it projects light already mm -hmm. is fascinating. That is. How, okay, so you, you're putting this thing in your eye. It's, mm -hmm. it's powered, it has some kind of power source. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine it does not have a wire running off of your eyeball. No, no. Is it the, powered by your eye, by, a, by an electrochemical gradient of eye syrup? It's, no, I imagine that's, that can't be right. Um, well, in some circles, I'm sure they have that. <laughs> um, this current technology utilizes uh, frequency. So anything that has okay. a wireless signal actually right. is powering it up. Mm -hmm. So that's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, even radio signals. Right. The problem with that is that since it's not grounded, it has a high risk of interference. So anything that goes through it, mm -hmm. it's, it could short circuit it or right. give you a different signal. It could be powered by the radio wave that also sends the information. Exactly. That's pretty cool. It's obviously, it's, pro it's projecting light, but it's, is it transparent when it's not on? Yes, so the current technology that they're trying to play with now, I refer to it as AMOLED or AMO LED. Right. Yes. Uh, otherwise, active matrix organic light emitting diode. Okay, so it's, it's an organic LED. Yes. So this is based on, what does that mean? Do so it's, it's basically a, a piece of carbon with two electrodes, and it's so tiny that uh, it doesn't need virtually any power at all. Mm -hmm. Microwatts we're talking about. Right. Um, it is transparent, it is flexible. Um, and very thin. And very, very thin. Uh, the use of the matter itself, 
um, is easy for the body to accept mm -hmm. because it's using the same right. carbon that we're currently mm -hmm. made of. And they have people wearing these already? Yes. So right now, um, since they're just using a single color or a sim single lumen, I should say, to mm -hmm. project that color, uh, you might see people wearing these in Japan even to simulate that they're looking like uh, a wolf or oh. a cat in the dark. So now it's just right. It's just fashion right now. Exactly. It's completely You're fashion. just in the dark, and these have your little two points of light. Mm -hmm. And the reason, and the way that they're able to power it so easily is they wear glasses, which have the battery in it. Mm -hmm. And since it's that close, yeah, it acts like a Tesla coil, basically. And just transmitting power to your little eyeball exactly. glow lights. Yep. That's weird. A little bit. So eventually, the idea is that they would be, you know, they would receive information from probably a computer that you would be wearing somewhere on your body. Yes. And that would be powering them, and that would also be giving you a connection to the internet. Not to mention uh, status updates. So not only translating, but actually seeing who you're talking oh. to. So name, age. Fascinating with uh, deep implications. Thank you for bringing that to us here at the SciShow Talk Show. And now, are you going to stump me? I could try and stump you, yeah. OK. Who's going to try to stump me? All right, here is a physics riddle for you. Physics riddle? If you were to lay a broom horizontally on your finger and perfectly balance it. OK, like this. Yep, so like, yep. just like that. And you were to cut it exactly at that point, which side would weigh more? They would weigh the same because it was balancing. So the, the bristle side and the handle side, you're saying, will weigh the same. I'm obviously wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes, yes, you are. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I didn't think about it for very long. Now that I know I'm wrong, the shorter, because it, it's not the same length of stuff on each side. Right. So one of them would weigh more. Right. Which one? I'm confused now. I've confused myself. The bristle side would weigh heavier because... Levers. Right. Explain. So, Continue. Uh, basically, if you were to consider a, a, a teeter-totter or a seesaw... Because it's not this... If it, was the, if it was just a pole, they would be equal. You're right. But it's not. It's not. So you need to have uh, equal distribution of that weight for it to work out on that teeter-totter. But in fact, uh, the longer side being heavier, lifting the shorter side mm -hmm. uh, comes down to torque, right. basically. So let's consider a larger person and a smaller person. With a yep. Not with a teeter-totter, not in the middle. Right. The, the teeter. The would, fulcrum. Exactly. <laughs> you would have to put... I don't know what to call that on a teeter-totter. I guess it's the fulcrum. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so if you put the uh, bigger person mm -hmm. closer to that center point right. and the less weight person on the longer end, the equal distribution of that entire teeter-totter is able to lift him because of that torque. That was good like because it was... Uh, Makes you think. It was totally confusing. And also, it was a really good stump hank because uh, physics, it's something you can figure out with math, not just trivia. Right. Yeah. That's great. Are we going to see an animal now? I, I hope so. That sounds we awesome. Are. Do you know who you're going to see? Uh, I don't. We're going to be surprised. Yes. Another, another surprise animal here on the SciShow talk show. And here we are with Jesse from Animal Wonders and what appears to be a frog. Of it, some kind. It is a frog of okay. some kind. <laughs> this is Stumpy. Oh, and, why is Stumpy? Uh, Stumpy's name rhymes with the kind of frog she is. Okay. She's a dumpy tree frog. I was. That's a funny name for a frog. It is. It is. She's also can be called a uh, White's tree frog from the scientist Mr. White or Dr. White that discovered them, or just called an Australian tree frog. So you're from Australia, Stumpy. Yeah. She is. Would you like to hold her? Sure. Hi. Wow, sticky. Feeling those sticky pads? Those are so sticky. Yeah, she uses those sticky toes, those pads on the ends of her toes, to help her cling to leaves in the Australian rainforests. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I, you can control them. Oh, yeah. I'm just can you see what she's like doing? A kitty. 
is perfectly perched. So yeah. she is crossing her legs, or little, folding her little arms in and tucking her feet in. So she's going to try and make herself into a specific shape. Can you guess what shape she's trying to be? Is she making herself a leaf? Yes, she is. A very moist leaf. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to be very moist where she is. She has to stay very humid and moist herself. She's an amphibian. So she's going to breathe through her skin there. If she gets dried out, she will no longer be able to breathe and she will probably not make it. Are you saying that she breathes through her skin like she actually takes oxygen in from her skin? She does. She breathes through her nose as well as her skin. She needs to have moist skin. She needs to have that oxygen coming in and out of her skin as well to be able to survive. How sticky are you? She can hang on. She can hang on upside down. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> These guys take a look at her eyes. Now a lot of frogs have big eyes, but hers are extra large because she's awake at night. Oh. So she's nocturnal, and what she's going to do, she's going to hang out on her leaves. I don't want to. <laughs> she's going to stick it on. Ooh. This is a better leaf than that leaf. Ooh. No, it's not. Wow, no. look at those legs from the back. Wink. <laughs> do it. Come here. It's okay. Whoa. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <gasps> oh. <laughs> she's like, nope. Thank you. <laughs> no. Yeah, well. <laughs> Come here, Sophie. Share the love. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Hi there. So nocturnal tree frog. Nocturnal tree frog. She's going to hunt with those big eyes. Do you want to hear something really kind of gross but cool? Yeah. Well, That's my favorite kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> she, the way she eats is very bizarre. She will launch herself towards a bug. Say it's a little cricket or something hanging out on a leaf. She'll launch herself towards it, grab a hold of it with her mouth. She has a sticky tongue. Ooh. She's going to get it inside her mouth. And then she's going to do something really weird. She's going to swallow with her eyeballs. I don't so, understand what you're saying. <laughs> what she does is she has the food inside her mouth. See how big those eyes are? Mm -hmm. So she's going to blink her eyes, and they're actually the, eye, the backs of the eyeballs are going to push the food down her throat. So every single time she swallows, she uses her eyes to push that food down her throat. You don't swallow like that? Do you? Yeah, that's my whole life. That's I thought that was normal. Swallowing with your eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> and now I want to see that, but uh, we don't have anything to feed you. She eats at night because mm. she's nocturnal. So these guys are they're called dumpy tree frogs because they get a dumpy appearance sometimes. They you don't are, look dumpy to me. They're common pets and people like to overfeed them, so oh. they get these big deposits on the back of their you know their back of their head area and they get short little stubby arms and. Oh. Chunky little guys. But you're svelte. Yeah. yeah. You look very healthy. Yeah. Another really neat thing about her is that she can change color to camouflaging with her background. Mm -hmm. So she, she's not like a chameleon. She can't turn multiple colors. She can turn two. She can turn green or brown. So if she's in a sunny area, sunny leaves, the temperature's going to be a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. She's going to be bright green to blend in with those bright green leaves. Say the sun moves and now it's shady, it's going to get cooler. That cool air is going to tell her body to become brown and blend in with the darker leaves. So it's shade. temperature sensitive, not yep. a conscious decision. Exactly. So if I put her on the colder tail, she would probably turn brown. Okay. Maybe. Is it a darker color? It is. It's like a it's yeah. like a, a darker brown and she's mm -hmm. kind of dark on yep. her on her head mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. She just went from a, a cool dark area into the bright lights. I saw the blink. You, did you see her blink? Whoop. Yeah. Her eyes <laughs> go all the way back. Yeah. It's really neat. Yeah, trucking. <laughs> <laughs> I like shoulders. Yeah. Does she really? She likes the tie, the highest perch. Mm -hmm. Come here, you. You can see her translucent skin underneath. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, it's kind of creepy looking. Hi, hi. Oh no, no it's thanks. Backtrack, backtrack. Thank you so much for bringing in Stumpy the Dumpy Tree Frog today. You're welcome. Thanks for Did having us. Did I say us. that right? Stumpy the Dumpy Tree Frog. Okay, good. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us during this episode of the SciShow Talk Show, and thank you to Jesse from Animal Wonders, and of course to Louis Winkler for bringing in some news and stumping me with a thing about a broom. It was a pleasure. Let's <laughs> awkwardly shake. Yeah, it's, it's, like the, it's like, there we yeah. go. Yeah. That's, that's how we shake hands at SciShow.